guys welcome to the inaugural explore light edits you youtube video so uh, basically how this is going to work is um i do lots of editing with people online after we do workshops and we help them kind of with the vision for how they're going to edit the images from the trips that they've taken with us so tonight we are going to uh, share some of that content for the very first time and we hope that this is a, an ongoing process that will be of interest to all of you so for our very first image we're going to deal with a image claire took in lake baikal in siberia absolutely stunning image backlighting um really gorgeous light beautiful shape a number of things to get through with the edit so um yeah this is going to be me working with claire start to finish um and uh, getting through the image so hopefully you enjoy it i guess a couple of points then uh, with with these images um sometimes when we're looking at files like this i think our our tendency is to feel like well you know this sun needs to go in here okay and um, i think a big part of the blending issue that people have is that they compartmentalize their viewing of their images so they see this nice bright high key image which looks great maybe it could be a little bit darker and then they see this detail in the sun here and they imagine the two of them together the, the beautiful sun from this shot and the nice high key you know clean snow from this shot the reality is that they don't match if you put this sun into this nice bright shot here it will look ridiculous okay because the dynamic range of that is you know on you it's 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 completely unnatural let's say so i'm not saying that we can't you know bring that sun in and fix this area a little bit but i just wanted to make that as a general point the more blending i've done over time the more i realized that it's not so much about technical skills although there is technical skills involved in it it's about knowing what matches and what doesn't match that's that's an absolutely crucial aspect of it um so let's just take a look at this file to begin with and um with a file like this what i want to just check at the outset is what detail is there so we can see that actually there's quite a lot of detail there okay so that looks pretty natural brightness level wise like that but let's try and go at it from a, a slightly different perspective okay so i want to keep the nice high key look to it the lights this bit of light here so i'm going to start off by bringing down the sky a little bit and what i'm going to try and do in the end is find a bit of a solution for that sunspot with a combination of range masking and excuse me volney uh blending through a luminosity mask in um in photoshop so i'm just going to pull that down just a little bit then i'm going to take a brush and what i'm going to do with the brushes i'm going to pull the highlights right back i'm going to pull the exposure back a little bit I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger there and i'm just going to brush to this central area okay where we have some bright highlights and obviously that looks awful um but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the exposure back a little bit and just take it back, take it back. But what I'm going to do to avoid these sort of spill out areas here is I'm going to go down to my range masking. And really what I'm doing with this constantly is these build up of these little minor adjustments. Uh, it's just such an integral part of what I do at my workflow anyway. And by range masking here, what I'm doing is I'm telling the mask by pulling from the left side i'm telling it okay i only want you to apply this adjustment to the brightest part of the picture so when i turn that off now what should happen is that when i bring exposure up and down it's only applied to the brightest part of the picture now it still has a little bit of smoothing issues around here so we can come and just make that mask either a little bit smoother so it blends in or sometimes we want to make the mask harder but that doesn't work in this case i'm just going to make it a little bit smoother then I'm going to take another gradient I'm going to make the sky a little bit darker and then I'm going to take another gradient and I'm going to make this a little bit darker as well but not quite as dark okay then I'm going to take a brush and reset it 
and I'm going to lift the whites up and I'm going to lift the shadows up and I'm going to crudely brush into this central area here. I'm going to just bring that back because that's far too aggressive. So I'm just going to lift the shadows in that area a little bit and I'm going to lift the whites in that area a little bit too. Then I'm going to take another gradient. I'm going to pull it from this side and bring that back a small bit. Then I take another gradient. I'm going to pull it from this side and bring it back a little bit. And the point I want to make, I've been really, I've been really working on um, my workflow uh, videos these last couple of days, and I can see that that gradient is not good down there, so I'm just getting rid of it. it just looks a little bit harsh. So sometimes if I want a subtle darkening rather than a really extreme one, I'll actually rather than pulling exposure in my gradients, I'll just add a little bit of contrast. See how that darkens the corner just a little bit; it's more subtle than pulling exposure. Okay, so. Uh, just to finish that point, what I've really been working on with the um, with the uh, online stuff that I'm doing at the moment because we're our travel photographers are all out of a job, is um, I've been trying to really incorporate into the workflow this idea of balance, trying to find balance in your images, and I'm sure lots of you have heard me say that before. But I don't just mean balance; I mean directional balance. So. Uh, the eye going in the picture where you want it to go. That's such a key sort of underpinning creative philosophical point of how I edit uh, or a point of, you know, the philosophy behind how I edit, if you want. Um, and the other really thing I've been trying to incorporate into that creative aspect of that, of that uh, video tutorial is the idea that uh, good editing happens with the culmination of many small changes rather than any one sweeping single change, okay? So I'm going to reset this image now, and um, I'm hoping that we can note two things. A, that the eye is now directed much more cleanly to the vehicle in the sun where we want it to go. And B, that there's been sweeping changes to the image, but we didn't really observe the change happening because it was built up over many small changes. So there's the reset, okay? So I would argue that the image has changed significantly. And I would also argue that the eye is now much more firmly placed on the van and the sun. Any thoughts? Anybody? So, um, you know, there's there's some other things that I would I would be interested in doing to this image, okay. And the first is I definitely want to get rid of the uh, lines down the bottom, and I need it to be a little bit straighter, okay. At the same time, I don't want to like totally cut off the bottom, okay. So I'm going to kind of leave it like that, okay. Um, I could, of course, there's probably a couple of ways I could approach this. I could do that. Let's say, which is also quite cool and quite elegant, um, but I might need to extend the bottom just a small bit. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to leave it like that, and I'm going to deal with some of these lines in Photoshop proper. I'd also, of course, like to just add a little bit of detail back into the to the blown out highlight there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to say that uh, Lightroom is not going to be able to deal with these problems for me. Uh, I think most of you are using Lightroom or at least uh, Camera Raw. So, um, you know, this is, I guess, a point in an image where, for me at least, there's a bit of a limitation. Now, before we go in there, I'd like to also note that I haven't adjusted a single global change to the image. Every adjustment I've undertaken has been local. So that's also a, a very key point for me in terms of workflow and editing, that not only is it slow, in terms of lots of little changes. Not only, only is it deliberate in terms of building up the adjustments on top of each other, those little adjustments are always local rather than global. Um, and that's a, that's a really key point for me too. So um, I'm gonna just do, uh, once I've done my sort of locally adjustments, I normally just then tweak the white balance a little bit. Let's give this baby a little bit of magenta and let's give it a little bit of sunshine okay then let's come to our our globals which would be a small bit of shadows a small bit of highlights i think a lot of people are like in here 
and like that straight away, which can also, a lot of the time, it can really crunch the contrast in an image. So I try to avoid that. So a little bit of highlights, a little bit of shadows, a little bit of whites, a little bit of blacks, a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity. Oh, don't like that. Small bit, uh, a little bit of color vibrance. Okay, so everything is everything is 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 measured and marginal. Okay, um, so let's bring this baby into Photoshop proper. Edit in, and here we go. So give me time to drink some some wine as this comes into Photoshop. Okay, here we go. Okay, so a couple of things. I guess this line here is a problem. And these lines here are a problem, I would say. So let's start by um, just trying to get rid of those guys. And let's just take the, let's duplicate the layer. It's always really best practice to do any of this on a duplicated layer. So if there's any screw ups, we can always go back to it. And then just edit, fill and content aware. Uh, not too bad. Okay. Now sometimes I worry, like if I'm, if I'm, I need to get rid of the line from here. But I could draw a big lasso around this whole area, but it's very close to the car, and I think it might get confused. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my clone tool, and I'm just going to get rid of a little bit more of this here, which is just on the periphery. It's nice and easy to get rid of. And then as it gets just a little bit more complex in terms of the tones, I've also moved the area I need to clone away from, you know, it potentially getting screwed up with where the car is here and trying to clone in a new car there. Edit, fill, and content aware, and go away. And boom, okay. So that's much nicer and uh, much cleaner, okay. So another little trick that we're going to work on this file, okay, is uh, how to restore a little bit of detail back into those yellows. Okay, I'd like to actually make that yellow and that yellow and a little bit of detail in the sunshine. Okay, so I'm going to actually do this just by painting yellow into them. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it through a luminosity mask. So I'm going to take a look at my lights masks here, maybe lights two, lights three, Lights four, okay, so lights four actually looks pretty good for the these lights anyway, okay, because it's selecting, the white is selected and the black is deselected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, essentially load, actually what I should have done first was duplicate the background layer, then take a look at lights four, then I'm gonna load lights four as a selection. Okay, so there's actually a mask on there now, which is protecting the areas around the light. So what I'm then going to do is I'm just going to take a brush and I'm going to go up and get a color. What color do we want those lights to be? Maybe definitely not as dark as this because it needs to be separate. Okay, so let's maybe cho choose a little yellow just outside here. And then let's actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go for the same color profile. What we're going to do is just move this guy over here a little bit so it's a little bit brighter. And then with our brush, which is there it is. Okay, on a low opacity, okay, just a really low opacity, okay, just 4%. Just going to bring some yellow into those lights like that. Okay, you can see the difference between here and here now. A little bit more yellow there. Jesus, Claire, I found it easier to balance yours than I did mine, I can tell you. Operator error. Okay, so you can see that's just gradually taking the sting out of those, okay? And what we can do is we can do the same thing over here. Um, let's choose a color that's kind of similar to what's happening over here. Let's choose this yellow here. Okay, and click OK. And then we also have the luminosity mask happening here. And just very gentle and very gradual through the mask. I don't want the sun to disappear. I just want the edge taken off it. OK, 
Okay. Do you mean do you mean the snow that's falling? This you mean? No, I I've left that it, that I've well I remember when we were there I was saying shoot quick shoot sl slow so I have a few that are quick and a few that are slow, you know so I I don't mind the snow in it you know um it shows what's actually happening for me you know, um but you mean like are you thinking about getting rid of the snow Claire is it? Yeah 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 no I don't think it'll come out, uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it looks honestly. I think the image looks amazing. You know, um, like it's uh, it's so cool and it's so different. We might, um, you know, center things a little bit because it's a little bit left heavy. Okay, so let's just reset that. Okay, and how I've centered this anyway is rather than centering the van, which would be there. Okay, I've kind of just come off to the side of it ever so slightly, something like that. So the center is almost in here. Uh, although I've slightly favoured the left, um, or something like that. Mm, maybe that's too much. Uh, okay, I'll just I'll just save it without the crop and then come back to it. Okay, so here. Okay, so I'm going to save that back into Lightroom. Close that down. Back here we go. Uh, reset it okay so that's where we were and that's where we got to 